Be safe today. We Christians don't fight a physical war. We were not out there killing anyone. Right-wing extremists are not the same as Muslim extremists. We don't kill. We preach. We preach the gospel. And you think we're mad. You think we do this out of hatred. We do it out of love because we see you lost in your sin. One sin kicked Muslims out of your heaven in the Quran, in Islam. And one sin will keep you from that same heaven. And let me tell you, it's not that same heaven that believers will go to. It's not a place of wine, a place of eternal sex and eternal erections. It's not a place where you have 72 huris. It's a place where you will be in the presence of God Almighty. There'll be no sin there. There won't be any eternal erections. We will be there, not standing erect, but on our faces, worshiping the one true God in perfect love, in perfect peace, without any tears. Oh, may that day come quickly, not just for us, but for those Muslims, for that man Sadiq Lorenzo, and for that man Ralph with the false name, and all other Muslims. We want you to be saved even as we are. We want you to go to the true heaven. Oh, Lord God, may it be so for them and for all that hear us this night. Oh, brothers, have you anything to say before we go to the next call? You have something to say, brother? No. We're we'll ready. We're ready for the next call by the grace of Jesus. I guess I've said I, quite I, enough. I'll, I'll just say, isn't it, isn't it interesting that every person who calls to attack Christianity has to misrepresent and distort yes. what we yes. actually believe and what the Bible actually teaches? Why? Why can't someone criticize us based on what we actually believe? Why, why not? And why does everyone who defends Islam have to distort and misrepresent Islam? Mm. Uh, over and over again, we've seen on these programs, uh, we're the ones who are speaking truthfully about both Islam and Christianity. And those who uh, attack us and defend Islam are the ones who uh, misrepresent and distort both Islam and Christianity. How can Islam be the truth when it relies on a constant supply of misrepresentation, distortion, and deception and how can Christianity be false when we're the ones who are speaking the truth all the time mm -hmm. on, on all these topics? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, well, let's take the next caller right now. Welcome. You're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Hi there. Yes, hello. Yeah, Welcome. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's a little bit uh, well, late or early where I'm from. I'm calling from London. Yes, Welcome. Sir. Welcome. Nice you. Thank you for calling. Um, well, you know, my name's uh, Abdullah, and hey, hey, um, Abdullah, are you? yeah, I'm fine. Um, I used to be a Christian. I became Muslim. May God bring you um, out of that darkness back into Christianity. Go ahead. Well, I, I was Anglican Christian, but okay. uh, quite recent. I don't know if you consider them to be real Christians, but uh, <laughs> I was Anglican. Okay. And uh, and basically, I was listening to what you said, That's right. and um, I find that uh, I think you follow a particular sect of Christianity, maybe not the Orthodox because Orthodox Christianity has a lot to say about warfare and fighting. Um, there's Augustine, Thomas Aquinas, yeah, yeah. Martin the Luther... The Just War Theater, yes. We'll get to your point. And yes. the just War. Those okay, role, well, rules uh, were formulated to deal with Muslims, uh, people yeah. like Islam, but go ahead. Sure. You wanted uh, you know, one verse in, in the New Testament that yes. Um, yes. allows Christians to go to war. Yeah. Well, uh, well, no, no, we that. asked Let's, you one verse from the New Testament like that teaches, Quran, that yeah, teaches like Christians to spread their faith by fighting or by killing. Yeah, Please, that's give us the one. Context. Like you find in Surah Al-Tawbah, Ayah 29, where your prophet said, fight those who do not believe in Allah nor the last day. Show us anywhere in the New Testament, specifically Jesus, because again, I know you guys don't like Paul, Supposedly he corrupted Christianity. If and he did, then he made Allah powerless, according to your Quran. We can get to that. But quote a passage where it says that we are to spread the rule of Christianity, and those who refuse to accept it, we are to subjugate them by the sword. Go ahead. Sure. Well, um, I'll, I'll quote Martin Luther for you then. No, uh, no, no, Martin no, Luther no, is no, not no, Jesus no, Christ no, or the hey, Apostle hey, Paul. Abdullah, Don't run. Abdullah, quote the scriptures. We're not Lutherans. No, no, no. We're not I Anglicans. Am. We're Christians. I'm, so let's follow the Bible. Go ahead, Mr. Anglican Abdullah. Martin Luther uh, now the Muslim, bring us the New Testament verse, please. Go ahead. We're not bringing you just what the Muslim yeah. commentators said. We're bringing you the Quran. So bring us now the New Testament. Now, let, me, let me correct that. Even when we quote a commentator like Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir is quoting hadiths that are yes. attributed to Muhammad. So yes. it's not not simply quoting Ibn Kathir. It's quoting Ibn Kathir who says there is a tradition that goes back to Muhammad that says X or to Muhammad's companions. And according to the so-called authentic traditions, the best generation of Muslims was Muhammad and his companions. So why don't you do the same thing and quote our most authentic sources, not Martin Luther, whom we don't believe to be infallible. And even Lutherans don't think he's infallible. 
quote our source. Please give us the chapter and verse like we did with Islam. We quoted the Quran, the Sunnah, the Sirah, uh, the Tarikh, you name it, we gave it to you. Can you do something similar? Quote the New Testament, the New Covenant, quote Jesus and his followers. We're waiting. Go ahead. Uh, okay, you spent like two minutes uh, all shouting at me. Chapter and anyway. verse, you said you have it. Please give it. Go ahead, yeah. Abdullah. Luke 14:23. Mother, oh which is go out into the country roads and lanes and compel people to come in that my house may be full. <laughs> Can you Martin read the context? Luther used it That's a parable. to Quote the context. Christian warfare. Quote the context. That's not warfare. You distort it and think you're going to get away with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, Mr. What Abdullah, being a good Englishman, why don't you read us the English of uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 7, which gives us exactly what this is. Go ahead and read Quote Luke 14, 7. the context. Go ahead. No, 14, don't be seven. a one verse Charlie. We didn't do that to your Quran. Don't do it to our scripture. 14, 7 is where it starts. Go ahead. I, I quote, as I said, go out into the country roads. Go yeah, out into the country roads. No, so country. That, 14, 7. Joe, let me just correct him So he told right. a parable. Let me just say something. That verse 23 doesn't exist in isolation. I know that you're used to reading the Quran, which is a contextual. That particular verse, verse 23, is found in a context with verses before and after it. Don't read it as if you're reading the Quran, which has no context. That's why you have to appeal to the Hadith. Read the context of 23. Go verses before that and see what the context is to see it's a parable. And compelling isn't by the sword even in that parable. So read the context or you're going to force us to read the context and expose another Muslim who's dishonest and tries to pervert the scriptures. Read the context. Start from the start of the parable, please. We're waiting, Abdullah. This is a Martin Luther on that verse. Martin Luther himself. Here we go again. Martin Luther. Uh, Martin Luther. Where is Martin Luther, okay. Mr. Abdullah, in the New Testament? Yeah, he says. That where is Martin Luther in the New Testament, sir? Compelled. Where is Martin Luther? Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Abdullah, why did you become a Muslim over there in London? Why? Why did you leave your supposed Christian faith? The Trinity. You didn't like the Trinity. Sorry, I, I'm saying again. Martin Luther is showing. Martin that Luther. It, it proves compelled. So that you're forget a Jesus Christ in the context. Quote Martin Luther. I just said Martin Luther is not infallible. You believe Muhammad is infallible, and if you have sound reports attributed to Muhammad, especially if they're multiply attested, I don't even know if you know about your religion. When you have mutawatir hadith, multiply attested, and they're sound, then that's on the level of the Quran. We quoted your best sources. We just told you, even Lutherans do not agree that Martin Luther is infallible. Can you, for the love of your God, quote Luke 14 and tell me what Jesus said in context? If you don't want to do it, you're too afraid because we're going to expose you. Then, Pastor Joseph, do you want to read 7 down because he's too scared? Okay. Let, let, let's read the context. Abdullah, you can wait or you can go off the air. It's up to you because we're tired of Muslims who call and deceive. Let's begin in Luke 14, 7. Let's give the context here. So he told a parable to those who invited, were invited when he noted how they chose the best places, saying to them, When you are invited by anyone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the best place, lest one more honorable than you be invited by him. And he who invited you and him come and say to you, Give place to this man. And then you begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down in the lowest place, so that when he who invited you comes, he may say to you, Friend, go up higher. Then you will have glory in the presence of those who sit at the table with you. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted then he also said to him who invited him when you give a dinner or supper do not ask your friends your brothers your relatives nor rich neighbors lest they also invite you back and you be repaid but when you give a feast notice the context here invite the poor the maimed the lame the blind and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just now the specific context, the close context of the passage. Verse 15, now when one of those who sat at the table, see this whole thing is around, around a, a feast, now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Verse 16, then he said to him, a certain man gave a supper and invited many. What's going on here? Jesus is giving, as he often did in the New Testament, a parable, a story. In verse 16, he says, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, 
that I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor and maimed, the lame and the blind. Let me stop and you real quickly, Joseph. Did, when the people refused the invitation of the master, did he have the servant slay them with the sword? No. You sure? Can you read that one? I mean, let's read it again. Verse 21. So people, that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out go quickly. Go slay them wherever you find them. No, it doesn't say that. He's, Until they pay jizya. He doesn't say that. You sure? No, it doesn't no, say come that. come on. It doesn't say that. In his Bible, it must say that. It's, that, in, the, it's in the New Abdullah Standard Version. Go the ahead. Anglicans have changed. You yes, know, most of them becoming Muslims over it. there. Go yeah. out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come with in. The sword. It doesn't say with, with the sword. Guns. It doesn't say with, with the tanks. sword. It doesn't say with oh. the sword or a but tank or a gun. Because he's, he's a Muslim, you yeah. can only understand compel the way Muhammad yeah. understood it. Compel oh, with the sword. That Don't would make compel sense. them with sound preaching. Don't compel them with deeds of love. Don't compel them by acts of charity like Jesus did. Yeah. Compel them with the sword. He's reading Muhammad into that parable. You know, if I was a Muslim, I guess that's the way I'd read it too. Verse 23, the, the verse in question, Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house house may be filled, for I say unto you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Oh, but go slay them. No, it doesn't say that. And I'm going to read a final passage from yeah. Luke 22, yeah. 49 uh -huh. to 50, because this okay. is the context. Luke, right? He went to Luke? Yeah. Luke 22, 49 50, which went with what David quoted earlier, because he quoted from Matthew. When those who were around him saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut, his, uh, cut off his right ear. Now, let's see what Jesus says in 51. But Jesus answered and said, stop, no more of this. But in the new Abdullah version, actually what Jesus meant, not right now because you're outnumbered, but when you become like Muhammad and are in the uppermost, then you can slay them. Ah. Allahu ah. Akbar. Abdullah, are you still with us? Uh, St. Augustine's exegesis of the Bible actually said that... Uh, Here we go again. Hello? Go, go ahead, we're yeah, listening, Abdullah. Go ahead. He was a prophet um, before Muhammad. I'm not going to quote you a single Muslim exegesis on the Bible at all. I'm going to quote you pure Christian exegesis on the Bible. Yeah, yeah. And St. Augustine used that particular verse, that very same verse you just was used. Was St. Augustine said, a prophet before Muhammad? He said, he said, if Jesus meant that everyone who, died, who used the sword died by the sword, then it, became, it was wrong because Peter did not uh, die and he used the sword. Therefore, the only meaning by it is that a person whose first recourse to every problem is to pick up the sword like or Muhammad, will yes. probably die. Yeah, oh, okay, like Abdullah, Abdullah, let, let's fine. just Abdullah. accept, Abdullah, let's just accept what you just said and what said Augustine just said. That's fine. But this does not teach, even, even if what you said and Augustine said is right, it does not teach that we should go out. Once again, you are at a loss, sir, to show us one verse in the Bible, yeah. in the New Testament, that clearly teaches, or the Old Testament, that clearly teaches Christians, people of God, to go out and to spread their faith by the sword, exactly. by killing, by fighting. But, We're still waiting for just one actually, verse. actually, actually, the situation is uh, much worse for Abdullah because, uh, by the way, for, for, for those who don't know who we're talking to, this yeah. is Abdullah al-Andalusi. Uh, I've had, I oh, think, three. I've had, I, I, I've had, I think, Abdullah three. Was pathetic. I no, no, no. no. More from you. From I, I've had, I've had, I think, except, uh, I think, I've had uh, three debates with him. You can watch all of these debates on AnsweringMuslims.com. We've, we've whatever? even debated: Is yeah. Islam a religion of peace, and yeah. is Christianity a religion of peace? So you can yeah. see those full debates. But Abdullah has appealed to what he calls the argument from orthodoxy, namely, <laughs> if he can quote any Christian in all of Christian history who's not a heretic, we are bound to accept those the, uh, those interpretations regardless of whether it conflicts with a clear statement of the New Testament mm. now uh, uh, none of us none of us up here accept this method so I don't know why you would expect Christians to accept this methodology but if this Abdullah is the method uh, is the methodology you insist upon and you say well any Christian who's not a heretic you have to accept his interpretation of any <laughs> New Testament verse are you consistent with this will you accept the position of any Orthodox Muslim in his view of Islam let me give you a few quotes. Ibn Kathir, Islam's greatest commentator on the Quran, as you know, says, Therefore, all people of the world should be called to Islam. If any one of them refuses to do so or refuses to pay the jizya, they should be fought till they are killed. Ibn Taymiyyah. 
certainly is not a heretic, says, whoever has heard the summons of the messenger of God and has not responded to it must be fought. He's not a heretic. The, Han, uh, the Hanafi jurist Shaybani says that Muslims are to combat those who disbelieve in God. He's not a heretic. Sheikh Burhanuddin Ali, not a heretic, says the destruction of the sword is incurred by infidels, although they be not the first aggressors. So even if they haven't shown any aggression towards you, they, by being infidels, they incur the sword. This is not an infidel. According to Averroes, the, uh, the medieval master of Islamic law, he says that scholars agree that all polytheists should be fought. The Maliki jurist Ibn Khaldun says that in the Muslim community, the holy war is a religious duty because of the universalism of the Muslim mission and the obligation to convert everybody to Islam either by persuasion or by force. The Maliki jurist uh, Ibn Abi Zaid says this, Jihad is a precept of divine institution. It is preferable not to begin the hostilities with the enemy before having invited the latter to embrace the religion of Allah, except where the enemy attacks first. They have the alternative of converting to Islam or paying the poll tax, short of which war will be declared against them. So here you have Orthodox Muslims saying that Muslims are supposed to be fighting everyone and that they are to do it in order to spread Islam. Do you expect the words, do you respect and agree with the words of all of these men? If you're consistent, you have to. If you reject anything any of these men have said, you have violated your own principle, which you are trying to force upon us. Go ahead. Well, David, it's, it's good to hear your voice again. Uh, I haven't chatted to you since uh, July and so on. Um, we, we have to also discuss the other matter concerning the websites, I think. Uh, but anyway, back to the point. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead um, to the point. Well, firstly, I'm not bringing only one Christian scholar. and I, don't I, I didn't bring you one Muslim You're scholar, but go ahead. Right, fine, fine, fine. I, 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 we're talking John Calvin here, Thomas Aquinas. I'm, I'm not even oh, a, I'm not a Calvin. I'm Augustine. <laughs> Abdullah, yeah. did you hear his question? Because you're running again, which is typical of your kind. Did you hear I'm his not, question? I'm getting to it. Okay, but please I'm, get I'm, to I'm it, patient. because none of these sources, you probably didn't understand, David. Yeah. Let me walk you through it. No, we no, no, do no, not no, no, appeal to them as infallible authorities, Abdullah. See, I can talk over you. We do not appeal to them as infallible authorities. We recognize exegetes can be mistaken. This is why we said, prove it from the contextual data that you misquoted from. And I was expecting better argumentation from you, but if this is your argumentation, please, when you come to America, you and I definitely got a debate. Now answer his question, since you're imposing that on us, do you accept it and admit that you are, need to be fighting and subjugating everyone? Answer the question, Abdullah, please stop running. Okay, um, that's, that's a bit of a lawyer's question because you're framing it. Um, yeah. The, the no, we quotes, use your frame. The quotes which he uses, excuse me, sorry, the yes. quotes which he uses, um, I agree on, but not the, the kind of uh, way you spin it. Um, so you the, spin it. The quotes have a meaning, and that meaning. Well, the quotes have a meaning, but Luke 14 didn't. Not the way you Very spin consistent. It. Go ahead. So, wait, you, you, you would agree, you're saying you agree with the quotes and not the way I'm interpreting it. Just tell me how you would interpret this statement. Therefore, all people of the world should be called to Islam. If any one of them refuses to do so or refuses to pay the jizya, they should be fought till they yeah. are killed. If anyone refuses to become Muslim or refuses to pay the jizya after being called to Islam, you should fight them until they are killed. Give me your interpretation of Go this ahead. verse. Well, uh, well, of this, um, of this. Uh, actually, um, Islamically speaking, the stronger opinion is that if someone refuses to pay tax, like in every country, uh, you stronger can Stronger opinion. No, 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 no. I gave you, I gave you Ibn Kathir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is an Orthodox Muslim. He's yeah. an Orthodox Muslim, and so you are compelled yeah. to sure. agree with him well, no, no, he's, by no, the he's argument from Orthodox. General, you man. notice the appeal to stronger opinion. Oh, I see. So when we appeal to stronger no, no, opinion, no, 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 no. Jesus and the apostles, he's that's not good enough. You're very consistent. Go ahead. No, no, no. But no, no, yeah. If I was, if I was to rephrase it saying um, any country that doesn't accept freedom, uh, we have to attack, we have to invade, we have to force freedom on the people and get rid of... Uh, get rid of uh, Again, you're freedom. either being dishonest or ingenuous. Why what do you mean freedom? No, no, there because, is no freedom because, of criticizing Islam under Islamic rule. Abdullah, according to your Quran, Surat al tawbah uh. you're not going to get a lie... Uh, you're not going to get far with lies and distortion, I'm telling you. Surat, Surat al tawbah verse 12, you? and if you go to chapter 60, verse 2, it tells you that if you criticize Muhammad, that's considering, considered warfare. How can you be fighting for our freedoms when the Quran robs us of the freedom of exposing Muhammad as a false prophet? Are you trying to deceive us? That's Surah Al-Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 12, and Surah 60, verse 2. 
How are you going to be fighting for people's freedoms when your Quran does not give us the freedom to expose Muhammad that he's a false prophet and his immoral teachings? Um, actually, you're wrong because if you look at all the all the narrations, and I think you. I, I think have looked at it. You are wrong. Chapter nine, you verse twelve. Chapter sixty, Quran verse two. Do you want me to quote him? Quote the verse first. Sure. Yes, my that. pleasure. Hold on. Let me quote it. I'm going to quote the verse first. Okay. My pleasure. One second. Let me give you the reference. Nine twelve. Yes, yes. Chapter nine, verse twelve. Do you want me to read it? Yes, sir. And then chapter sixty, verse two. But if they violate their oaths and their covenant and taunt you for your faith. Fight ye the chiefs of unfaith. Do what with your faith? Fight. Oh, okay. What do they do with your faith? Uh, taunt you for your faith. Okay, so it's not that simply taking weapons and attacking you. If they taunt you, mm -hmm. criticize your faith, what yes. do you do with them? Fight ye the chiefs of unfaith. What about Surah 60, verse 2? Surah 60, verse I have in two. front of me. I'm going to read it. Go ahead. If they come on you, they will be enemies to you and stretch out against their hands and their tongues to do you evil, and they wish that you may disbelieve. According to the Quran and even the examples of your prophet, when someone disparages, criticizes Muhammad, they are to be killed. You know this very well, as I do, because according to Islamic Sharia, to speak an offense against Muhammad, it is capital punishment. So how are you going to fight for my freedoms to criticize and expose your prophet? Can you explain that to me? Um, it doesn't actually say what you say it says. Yes, it did. <laughs> Abdullah, I'm oh sorry. God. Abdullah, just a moment, please. Abdullah, if you will, if you'll stay with us, we're gonna have yes. to take a break. If you will stay on the line, that's up to you. I know it's your nickel or whatever. You can wait, and we'll get you when we come back for the break, or you can go. But let me just encourage you to try to find something better, because up to now you've proved nothing. You've not given us one verse from the New Testament or the Old Testament that tells covenant people of God to spread their faith by the sword. We can give you many verses, and we have from the Quran apples to apples not apples to orange don't go to Martin Luther don't run to John Calvin That's give us the New do. Testament give us the Bible okay so if you want to remain on the line and continue your arguing I pray that you do a little bit better job you can be patient and hold on after the break otherwise if we come back and you're not there we'll pray for you at the end of the show let's go to that break right now welcome back to Jesus or Muhammad Abdullah are you still on the line uh, okay, Abdullah is no longer with okay. us, I guess. Uh, Brother Sam, yeah, let me, before we go to the next call. That's not what the pastor is saying. Again, Abdullah, I was expecting better argumentation, but Lord willing, when you come to America, look me up. You and me are going to definitely debate by the grace of Jesus Christ. You said that's not what the passages say. Either you're ignorant or you're using taqiyya. It's one of the two. Here, let me read what your commentaries say about Surah 912. Surah Al Tawbah 12. This is Tafsir Al Jalalain. Wait, wait, wait. According to Abdullah's method, let's just okay. be clear here. Yeah. According to Abdullah's method, a method, if there is a dispute about a verse and you don't agree with one person's uh, interpretation of it, all you have to do is name some commentator. Mm -hmm. And whether you think that's what the Quran or the Bible is actually saying, you have to go with what the interpreter <laughs> is saying. That's the method he applied to us. So let's be it's consistent it. here. These are the two Jalalats. But if they break, if they violate their oaths, their covenants, after making their pact, and assail your religion, look how he translated it. Slander it. Oh, but it doesn't say that. According to these two, it means slandering your religion. That's one. Let's go to the one that's attributed to Ibn Abbas. And by the way, for the Christians, if you want to read these commentaries for yourself, I can recommend two online commentaries. Altafsir.com. A-L-T-A-F-S-I-R. Altafsir.com. A-L-T-A-F-S-I-R.com. You can go read this for yourself. And also, tafsir.com. T-A-F-S-I-R.com. Uh, now, let me read this other one. Because, oh, it doesn't say that. No, it does. Either because you don't know what it says or you're using taqiyya. But, glory to God, you won't get away with it. Okay. And if the people of Mecca break their pledges, which are between you and uh, them after their treaty has been made with you, and assail your religion, how does this interpret it? And defame the religion of Islam. Oh, I didn't say that. Yes, it did. The text said it. The sources say it. Either you do not know or you're trying to conceal it. Abdullah, please, for the love of Jesus, if you left Christianity for these pathetic reasons, you're never truly a Christian, and I pray you'll become a true Christian and abandon yes. your false religion in Jesus' yes. name. Yes, yes, yes.